It's Tuesday, February 18th, 2025, and I've got an update for you on our major winter storm that's getting going right now. But before we dive into that, real quick update on what we're doing with the Y'all Squad. Uh, thanks to you guys, we've raised over $100,000, and we are going to be uh, using that and much more helping these communities in eastern Kentucky, southern West Virginia, southwest Virginia, and even into portions of Tennessee after these major floods. Uh, we did one supply drop yesterday. We're going to do a big tour of supply drops today with the y'all squad trucks we are finding people that we are going to uh, relocate we're going to pay for them uh, places to stay for the next six months to a year we're buying some people uh, some vehicles who had some trouble with insurance and federal assistance and we're making a big difference out here uh, thanks to you so once again thank you for going to the y'all squad.org and making a contribution to our nonprofit organization all right now moving right along we've got winter storm warnings out from kansas through missouri arkansas oklahoma into tennessee see Kentucky all the way over into the mid-Atlantic, uh, even close to the outer banks of North Carolina. We've got winter storm warnings right now ahead of our major winter storm that is going to bring significant snow to areas that were just flooded. So this is going to cause problems. There's still some places where there's water over the road or there's runoff coming off of hills that's going to freeze and that's going to cause a lot of problems. Make sure you're ready for that. But the areas that I believe will be most affected today are going to be southeast Kansas, northeast Oklahoma, southeast Southwest uh, Missouri and Northern Arkansas. This includes Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we've got potential major impacts uh, from the snow today and the ice and, and the sleet. Joplin, Springfield, you guys are also included in those major impacts that we expect. Also, uh, Fayetteville, uh, we expect major travel delays. Pittsburgh um, in southeast portions of Kansas. All the way over towards Paducah, Kentucky. Of course, over here in southern Illinois, back into extreme southeastern Missouri, we are expecting some major travel problems, and we've got moderate uh, problems expected all the way over towards Bowling Green and back towards Wichita. Today is our first ever moderate risk of winter storm conditions that's been issued from our winter storm outlook, which that doesn't mean a lot because we just started doing this like a week ago, <laughs> but still moderate risk in pretty much the same areas that we were just talking about there with the major impacts from the winter storm severity index, enhanced risk from Kansas all the way over to Western Kentucky as well. Well, that does move east tomorrow, uh, where we've got a slight risk of uh, winter storm conditions from Arkansas through Kentucky, Tennessee, and of course over into Virginia and North Carolina. Well, let's take a look at what the radar could look like as we go through the future as we track this storm. Tonight, around 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have heavy snow in Tulsa. We're going to have light snow in Kansas City. We might have a little bit of snow in St. Louis, but uh, there's going to be some dry air that has to be overcome before the snow starts falling there. It might take a little while longer for it to really get going over there. Uh, but snowflakes will be flying in Paducah around this time. We're likely going to see heavy freezing rain around Little Rock and Fayetteville uh, around this time. And then I think we're going to see that uh, snow and sleet move into Memphis around midnight. It'll be snowing heavily in Fayetteville and Little Rock uh, by midnight. And then the snow gets into Nashville around 2 a.m. Wednesday morning, it'll be snowing heavily in Memphis and Nashville by 4 a.m. We're going to see that snow work into Knoxville, maybe closer to 5 or 6 a.m. AM. And then this is also when we're going to see a large band of moderate snow over Kentucky between Lexington, Moorhead, and then over towards Charleston, West Virginia, uh, where we might see a decent amount of snow between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. But notice what happens whenever this interacts with the Appalachian Mountains, it really just falls apart. And then we see it try to come back together over here on the East Coast, but in a very small um, zone, like from Southern Maryland, Southern Delaware, down towards Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, down towards northern portions of uh, North Carolina. It's a very small area that's going to be affected by snow here. And even more so than yesterday, the storm's track looks more progressive and less likely to impact the Northeast. From Washington, D.C., up through Philadelphia, New York City, and Boston, it looks less likely now that you guys will receive any snow at all from this. Let's talk about snow totals. Uh, still pretty much the same thing that we've been talking about for the past several days. It's still expected over here in the Central Plains and Southeast Kansas, Northeast Oklahoma, Southern Missouri, Northern Arkansas. There's going to be a pretty large corridor of snow that exceeds 10 inches, especially around Springfield and Joplin and surrounding areas. It's looking less likely that we will exceed two inches in St. Louis and Kansas City and also in places like uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. It's very likely that the heaviest snow will be to your south. Memphis, 
heaviest snow will be to your north. I wouldn't be surprised if we got about an inch of snow or so, but uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to be much of anything in Nashville either, where we could see maybe one, maybe two inches of snow. Paducah, Kentucky, I still think, you know, three to five inches is possible over there, uh, but the hot spot's going to be right here around Springfield, uh, over to Tulsa. That's where uh, we're going to see the, the, the biggest snow totals. I think. And then moving our focus over farther to the east, you can see that there's a big change in the second leg of the storm. And this is why it's so important not to get too attached to the model runs that come out in the five to seven day time frame. We started talking about this storm and how it could potentially impact the northeast and the I-95 corridor between Washington, D.C. And, and Boston several days ago, but we're very uh, clear about how it was only a 20% probability. It was very, you know, wishy-washy and things are going to change. And and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, just because a model shows that it might snow a lot five days from now doesn't mean that there's any sort of truth to that. That's why it's very important to me here on this channel that we avoid showing snow totals before the three-day time period. And even at three days, we're very, very open about how likely it is that the forecast is going to change. And now we're getting to the point where I'm pretty confident in what the models are showing. And uh, it looks like we're going to see potentially no snow in Washington, D.C. Maybe be up to an inch uh, if there's a little bit more moisture, which is possible. I don't think we're going to see much snow in Philadelphia, New York City, uh, or Boston, though. There's still a chance that we see a couple of inches over on Cape Cod. Uh, if you're in New York, the, the places that are going to get the most snow are certainly uh, going to be off of Lake Ontario here, as we're going to have a pretty hefty uh, lake effect snow band that's going to be happening from today all the way through the duration of the storm. But the real winter here on the East Coast is going to be Norfolk, Virginia, where we could see eight inches of snow. There's a tiny little zone here that's going to see about eight inches of snow. And then even over towards Richmond, uh, it's likely that we see less than three inches. I mean, I would say two to five inches is possible in Richmond. So yeah, a very dynamic storm system that has two different legs. All right. The first one here has been a slam dunk forecast. We've been forecasting this same amount for pretty much the last seven days. But after the Appalachian Mountains... <laughs> Uh, this this part has been a little bit more difficult and I feel sorry for your local meteorologists over here that have had to deal with this. One thing that's still on the table is the potential freezing rain concerns over here in North Carolina, specifically around and south of Greenville, North Carolina. There's a good chunk of the state that could see over a quarter inch of ice accumulation. That's going to cause some very slick roads and some hazardous travel and it's going to cause maybe some power outages. And also if you look over here in eastern Oklahoma and western portions of of Arkansas, we're starting to increase confidence that we will see more icing than what we originally expected. Maybe more than a glaze of ice, but actually closer to a tenth of an inch, maybe even a quarter of an inch of ice possible around Fort Smith, which will also cause uh, some significant travel problems and some power outages maybe tonight. And the roads are going to be terrible for a while after the storm. And if you lose power, you're going to want to make sure you have propane and however you uh, heat your home in the uh, event of a power outage, because the cold temperatures are going to be with us for a while. Look at this. We're going to be below zero all the way out here into Thursday morning uh, for a lot of the central plains and the northern plains. Way up here into North Dakota and Minnesota and portions of South Dakota, we're talking about negative 30 degrees. And with the wind, it could feel like negative 60. So this is going to be some uh, bitter cold, some of the coldest air of the season so far for a lot of us. But the good news is, is it's not going to last long. Temperatures are quickly going to moderate from west to east. Um, as we go into next week. And this is all because the big trough that's causing the storm system is exiting to the east and allowing for a large persistent ridge to form in the west that will slowly propagate to the east and allow for warm air advection from the southwest. This is seen very well here on the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Through March 3rd, I think we're all going to be getting back to normal and a lot of us are going to have some above average temperatures. I think that the first First week of March might be a quiet weather week. I know I'm not supposed to say the Q word, but you know, this is the first time I've looked at the medium range forecast pattern and been like, oh, well, I don't see any crazy storms down the pipeline. So hopefully that trend sticks <laughs> and we all get a break. But if not, of course, I'll be here for you uh, in the event of upcoming storms. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.